Department of Nuclear Medicine at the University Hospital of Fulham has traditionally had a very strong pet center since last couple of uh, decades actually. We have produced lots of new tracers and research has been very prominent at this center and because we have all the facilities, I personally believe that the Theranostic Center at the University of Ulm will be very successful in challenging cancer at its very base. Over the last years, we have now established, together with nuclear medicine, novel imaging technology for small animals, PET-CT, PET-MRI, and this will bring basic research even closer to nuclear medicine. So concerning the current role of hybrid imaging, specifically PET-CT and PET-MR in the clinics, in oncology, neurology, but also cardiovascular medicine or infectious diseases, is continuously increasing, and it's really exciting for us as nuclear medicine physicians to see that also the acceptance and importance for our clinical partners partners is continuously growing, not only in the clinics, but also in research and development. The Center of Imaging was established almost three years ago. It's really a great success for both departments, for nuclear medicine and also for radiology, because we have a combined reading, we have an exchange of residents, of PET-CT reading, and the next step forward this year will be our own PET-MRI scanner. Theranostic actually is like combination of therapy and diagnostics. With the help of radio-labeled probes, you can unravel, you can understand the pathophysiology of tumor cells, intracellular and extracellular environment. And if you understand how this cancer cell survives, you can defeat them. My Theranostic group is actually very active in understanding the clinical course of a patient. And based upon the clinical need, we go back and find out specific targets which can help these patients. Diagnostics and imaging with radio-level probes has substantially changed our understanding of neuroendocrine tumors. We can diagnose them far more easily. We can really see all the lesions. We can monitor tumor evolutions over treatment. And of course, we can use this also for treatment purposes, which is unique in this setting. I would say nuclear medicine already contributes a lot to precision medicine and targeted treatment because everything we see in nuclear medicine is targeted with the radio labeling of specific compounds and specific surface receptors. Nuclear medicine is not any longer just a diagnostic but also a therapeutic discipline and all the tools employed by nuclear medicine need to undergo critical testing in the framework of evidence-based medicine in prospective randomized controlled trials as all the other compounds, systemic treatment, surgery and interventional radiology for example as well. Oncology and neurology future will be defined by the precision medicine. Precision medicine is based upon specific targets. These specific targets can be visualized through a specific radio pharmaceuticals. We at the University Hospital of Fulham have a very strong GMP radio pharmaceutical lab and we believe this will definitely define the future of neurology and oncology. Individualized imaging and mathematical models have allowed individualized treatment. To further improve treatment planning, we now use the concept of virtual patients. We have roughly two decades experience in using radionuclide therapy for successful myoablation. Radioimmunotherapy is very selective due to the highly specific uptake of the radio-labeled antibodies in combination with the short range of the emitted alpha or beta particles. Given the excitement that is associated with possible developments in the nuclear medicine field, I can only encourage them to tackle these problems and develop novel diagnostic and therapeutic strategies in that field. So concerning the prerequisites for translation from preclinical research data to the clinics from mice to men, you of course need excellent experiments, we need excellent tumor models, we need the devices, the machines, but we have them. So in my opinion, the most important factor is the human factor. We need good and well-trained clinician scientists interested in both research and clinics for translation of preclinical data into the clinics. Mm -hmm.